I have a question for you. Okay. You told me a story, and I didn't put it in the, it wasn't in the print article. I thought we should get it on this. It's the Gertrude Stein story. Oh, Gertrude and Stein. So, okay. the, so, so tell me that the name of this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't really know, but I heard the story, and I thought, a great story. Gertrude Stein. On her deathbed, she's not going to ever get up again. Everybody knows it. All her friends are gathered around. And they say, well, Gertrude, did you ever find the answer? And she said, what was the question? And it was the last thing anybody ever heard her say. Now, if that's true, I don't know. But I thought, that's a good story. I like the line. What was the question? He said, a lot of art is really ultimately about questions. Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, a lot of questioning goes on. I think it's very good to question. I, I told my son one time, I said, I think the greatest blessing in the world is to have a curiosity that keeps you awake at night. Not, not a bad thing to always be wondering, what's, what's going on? What's this for? What is that work that way? Questions that are going to mean something, and I can't think of anything right now, but I remember in the past I have engineered some pretty nice questions. Questions <coughs> that came up were uh, pretty meaningful, and I noticed that my mind would slow down so that I could see more than ever before I could see an answer in a much more complete way. This happened several times. I seem to be much more on balance. I, I, can, uh, I can function a lot easier. But <clears throat> when I allow myself to drift into close company with women, I find myself doing really crazy things. I find myself emoting, uh, going off the rails a little. I get in trouble. That brings up a lot of questions for which I haven't found the answer. But as I said before, that's how we all got here. All this dynamic stuff that women go through, they, it doesn't matter which culture. You can break it down like this. Men are inclined to think and women are inclined to feel. So it's a competition between thinking and feeling. And I think I, hardly anybody really understands that. I wouldn't have understood it if it hadn't have been pointed out. And once it was, I said, oh yeah, right, that's so logical. That's exactly the way it is. Women feel their way around and men think their way around. But now we live in a very interesting age where now we have women who are lawyers and judges and CEOs and it's, we live in a very interesting time. Very interesting, I think. Now this all started last year when you started to do dancers, but at that point, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, they were single dancers then, right? But, but what was the thought there? I mean, it, it, it suddenly... Dan oh, this, the, the single dancers were, you know, they were carefree, they were just like, you know, you meditate by yourself. Now, if, uh, I'm sure that some married people can drift into meditative states uh, in their marital relationships. I know a guy who did. I mean, they made love every afternoon at 2 o'clock, just like some of the other people were doing meditative practices. And he passed away. I asked the lady, I said, what was that like? She said, well, you just got deeper and deeper and deeper into the experience. Everything became more and more and more subtle. And she's the only person that I ever talked to that, that had done that. Um, but, you know, there are tantric practices in, uh, in Buddhism. I guess you can take classes, you know, to uh, transform sex into a meditative experience and have all kinds of fantastic experiences. A little bit about the drama. <laughs> had a lot of drama. Yes, sir. A lot of drama. This, this lady's pregnant, but her arm has become like a lightning rod. She's uh, stimulating, shall we say.
he's being given a hat. It's a combination of dunce and jester. And he doesn't even know it. The jester and the dunce, I think it's a good combination. You know, jester requires tremendous acumen. The, I guess the jesters, if they weren't very highly skilled, push the king just exactly as far as they could take him. And they could tell him things nobody else could. And he's enjoying the vision of this beautiful young lady and he has no idea what's befalling him. This guy, in order to get onto this tango, he has to give up logic. There's no way that he would get on that damn tango with one <coughs> roller skate and here's this provocative lady with hooks. Come on, Buster, let's go. And he's going. Now all these paintings were done since April, huh? Yeah, I, I first started painting these in April. Yep, I, uh, I spent the first <clears throat> three months of uh, 2010 doing drawings and writing notes Every morning, I get up and I take a little walk through, the, there's this lagoon right close to the house, and I take a pad and pencil, and I walk through the lagoon. Now, I don't do this every day, but I have done it a few times this year. And a lot of times I will have an idea that is, uh, that comes to me slowly enough so that I can really look at it, and it's complete enough that I can do something with it. And you told me earlier that this, you feel like this this work you've gotten someplace that you haven't gotten before. Well, <clears throat> I have been fascinated for a very long time in my life. I've been really fascinated with all this stuff <clears throat> that women and men, men and women, imagine that they just have to go through to put their two little electrodes together. It's incredible. It's the simplest thing in the world. It's the most natural thing in the world. Laying in this tall, succulent grass with this little girl, and we were looking up the sky and puffy blue clouds. I had this tremendous feeling of love from right here in the solar plexus, like the, real, the center of my being. There was this tremendous feeling of love for this little girl. And it really impressed me because it really lasted for a while. And this next time I experienced that from the center of my being was in 1968 in my studio, in my studio right above what used to be Club Sushi. At that time, it was not focused at anyone in particular. It was just something that was coming out of me. And I said, aha, this is interesting. In the interim, I went through 14 years of school. I went through the U.S. military. I'd gone through two marriages. And now here's this really glowing experience again that I haven't experienced since I was five years old. That was impressive. And again, it lasted for quite a while. Oh. So here's this guy. He's got these fantastic tail feathers of a male and he's got these big dugs of a female. And he's, he's either sweating or he's crying or he's not happy. This guy's not happy with the situation. Of all the things I painted, this gets more of a response. I mean, people react to this damn thing. That was great. So I did, I must have done like 10 of them in a period of like maybe three years. So here we have the titted rooster as a flasher guru. He's got his wings out like this, showing you these three breasts. And the breasts are for awareness, truth and love, which corresponds to the Christian trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Blast the world with awareness, truth, and love. You see as a white halo? I mean, this guy's, he's, a, he's an angel, my kind of angel. You know, the Buddhists have their angels, the Christians have their angels. I want to have my own angels. And, you know, hopefully they will be absolutely gorgeous, lovely, maybe a little zany. <laughs>